You are looking live at a daily chart of the NASDAQ, and you can see it's kind of going sideways here. Uh, a couple things. First of all, we have whisper quiet volume. It's like a librarian day. You got to whisper. It's so quiet in here. Um, I'll just point out, yeah, the volume was way down here this last couple sessions. Today, 21% uh, below the 50-day average volume. Obviously, the market is just waiting for the new data point from NVIDIA, and the NASDAQ is showing this. I just want to point out one thing here. The 10 EMA, which is this line here, the green line, is starting to trade through the 50, and you can see the 21 trending as it will pass through the 50 eventually, and you can count with me here. The days above the 21, where the low of the session is above the 21, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. Tomorrow will be the 10th day, uh, provided that it doesn't go below, like today, it it um, it crossed below the low of Thursday's low, where we had that real cautious day before Jerome Powell, where it was 17,589, and today made a low of 17,573. Not a huge deal. I mean, it pulled back to the 10 and found support, but it's all just dependent upon NVIDIA right now. It really is. I hate to put everything on one stock, but that's kind of the reality of it. I also wanted to point out that this correction here of 16%, this, is, this type of move has not been seen since the bear market of 2022. It's it's really remarkable that we, we sold off 16% as rally back a good portion of that but now the rally's stalled and it's at an inflection point here where it could you know tr trade below its 50 and and this um uh, this follow through day these follow through days could fail certainly um but we just take it one day at a time i want to point out that it closed today you know uh, six zero point six percent above its um 50 so just trading sideways you know, short-term moving averages in an uptrend. You just got to give it some time, allow it room to breathe. The three legs down that we had back here uh, last year, and, you know, the uh, August, September, and then October reversed, this entire move was 16%. It took three months to go 16%, and here we did it in like three weeks, and then had this V-shaped recovery. So just wanted to point that out. That's why the, you know, the velocity of the selling is met with, you know, buying, right? Because there's dip buyers in there. But right now the rally has, you know, kind of stalled here and it's at, it's at a crossroads for sure. And the data points coming up, you know, later this week, tomorrow afternoon, actually with NVIDIA is going to determine if this is going to power higher, if it's going to sell off and fade. Um, yeah, just take it one day at a time. Um, it's uh, definitely at a crossroads, as uh, Eric Clapton would sing. Anyway, I've got to get to the um, the Russell 2000, which had this nice rally up, and it's pulled back. But it's still, you know, this is above its 10 EMA by quite a bit. Yeah, 1.5% above its 10. So it's real strong. It made this move from, you know, 196 up to, you know, above 220 here, 222. So, um, you know, to give back a little is kind of normal. Uh, MDY, the mid cap stocks, and once again, above its um, 10 EMA, 1.2% above the 10, and then the SPY. Um, this, this looks pretty nice here, actually. The uh, consolidation here, the sell-off, you know, the, the rebound, and now going sideways near that old 565 buy point. And then the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is really strong, made a new high yesterday and was up fractionally today not bad for the uh the dow jones industrial average anyway i gotta get to some stocks it, it, it was a quiet session it was really sleepy um very defensive but i gotta say this rotation is kind of healthy we're seeing defense utilities uh reits you know real estate stocks um financials insurance you know some retail uh, some medical, health care, hospital, drugs. I mean, it's spread out pretty good. It's not all just the um, the mega cap tech stocks. This is HEI. I had a, a friend um, ask me about this stock and holding into earnings. They reported earnings last night. 
And, you know, my formula for holding into earnings, you take the largest one day loss of the year, and that was 5.3%. And I tack on a 5% uh, stop loss on that. So I just round that up to like 6% plus the 5% stop loss. You need 11% cushion to hold into earnings, which he had. And all this thing did after earnings is just trade down to its 50 find support and bounce. And you can see it close at 87% of its daily range. These defense stocks have been reporting really strong quarters. As you can see down here, uh, you know, accelerating earnings growth, strong sales growth, and the stock actually ended up today. It was down quite a bit. Let's take a look at this on a five minute chart. Uh, if market surge will allow. Yeah, there you see the sell off at the open just all day long, this thing was bought. So congrats to my friend. Anyway, um, that's just my formula for holding into earnings. You take the largest one day loss over time. So if you're looking at NVIDIA, let's go to NVIDIA here. Their largest one day loss was 10% back in December of, of 2023. So 10% loss and then uh, tack on the 5% stop loss. You need a 15% uh, cushion to hold this into earnings and the applied volatility for their earnings is 10%. So roughly it's gonna go up or down 12 bucks, give or take a few. The options market's not always correct. It's not accurate. Like any other indicator in, in the stock market, nothing's 100% foolproof. But let's just say for kicks that it does go up 10% or down 10%. You're looking at, you know, 140 uh, roughly or down to maybe 115. I think if it sells off to 115 on a good report, uh, people will be buying it. And I believe that if it goes up near that old buy point, I think even more people will be buying it as it will have momentum to take it higher above that old high of 140.76. So anyway... I'm not going to go through the mega caps because they're not doing anything. And, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of being sold to buy other stuff. Tesla, like I said, I'm not going through these uh, meta, psh, nothing burger, a little bit of selling just to buy these other names. So I'm just going through these other names here in the defense. You know, first, I'm going to start with defense, utilities, REITs. This is Northrop Grumman making new highs just about every day. If you look at the weekly chart, yeah, I mean, this thing broke out of its base. It's making new highs every week. So, you know, all you have to do is hold it and count your money. Um, Curtis Wright, another one that broke out of this consolidation. We had this on our ready list. I didn't buy it like a fool. I should listen to my advice a little more. <laughs> Stock with a friend, he bought this stock that I that I had on my ready list. I didn't buy it, but uh, it's been doing great for him. I'll get to that in a minute. Curtis Wright is doing well. HWM, uh, How I Met, which we had here. And this is the one that he bought. And he's just telling me, hey, did you get How I Met? I'm going, no. He's going, geez, it's a really strong stock. <laughs> going, yeah, I should have bought it when I told everybody else to. <laughs> but he's happy with it. These defense names are just doing really well. Um, uh, ERJ is another one not making new high every day, but come on, broke out of that double bottom base and uh, just looks really strong. Uh, anyway, that's enough of the um, aerospace and defense stocks, except for lie. There's GE. This one's still playing a possum trading sideways. Just can't trade above that 177 level, but um, give it time and it will. As soon as you look away, it'll take off. Some of the utilities, which is, you know, these kind of like uh, defensive dividend plays. The people like to own these. Uh, you can see this base on base on base. It just goes sideways. And now it's starting to move higher. That's a pg and &E, a California utility. I believe Northern California. Yeah, based in Oakland. Uh, WEC, which used to be Wisconsin Energy. This one looks pretty good, too, on the daily chart. You can see... Yeah, this one's ripping off, you know, the low 77 up to 92. Thank you very much. That looks really good. Um, some of the other um, uh, NRG utilities looking looking pretty darn good. And, and this one, to me, looks ready to buy as it's trading sideways within a base near a moving average. You can see it's showing the ability to move here. 
I'm going to move from a 35 to 87. Now it's consolidating, sold off with the rest of the market, undercut the 50, rallied right back through. Now it's trading sideways. That looks uh, really good to me. Anyway, I'm going to move on. No, I lied. I have one more. NEE, Nextera Energy. And that one looks really good as well. You know, just uh, trading sideways near a moving average within a base. And it showed the ability to move, you know, 53 to 80. That's a hell of a move. So um, don't sleep on the utilities. I know they're thought of as, you know, widows and orphans stock just for dividends, but um, they can move too. And um, as we see the breadth in the market spread out, and we're not just seeing the technology AI max seven stocks moving. It's really the breadth is um, moving to other areas, the rotation, the money's flowing to the banks. JP Morgan making new highs. Thank you very much. BIRT. This is one that I did take my advice and bought this one. It's doing pretty well. I think it traded up to 31 today. Not bad. It's got that 20, uh, 2969 buy area there. Uh, so it's just trying to push away from that base. And then the other one is uh, SEZL, another financial. There's a lot of them. I'm not going to go through all of the... Um, uh, small caps or mid caps like this one, a $20 billion Cincinnati financial looks pretty good. Oops, this is insurance. That's right. I'm going to the insurance companies now. I got ahead of myself. Cincinnati financial looks good. HRTG, this is another one that just keeps, you know, it's just, if you look at the uh, weekly chart, this just looks like a high tide flag here where it ran up from, uh, you don't really take the flag from the absolute low. You know, you probably take it from where it broke out. Um, so maybe $8 up to like 16, whereas a 15.65, you know, flagged out there last week. Let's take a look at that on the daily. Yeah, just a little bit of consolidation here. Just a little bit of what you'd call like a little shelf. And now it's moving higher. So that one, I mean, these things are looking fantastic. It's kind of unfortunate because it comes at our cost as we're paying higher insurance premiums. This is Arch Capital, another one. TRUP, the dogs and cats. One, this had an inside day today. This one looks fantastic. There's just a lot of them in this group. MCY, another one that I had on my list that I didn't buy that's you know making new highs. And today had an inside day, allowing the moving averages to catch up all state. You're in good hands, making new highs. I mean, yeah, I like new highs. So, yeah, just one after another in the insurance group. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. I am gonna go to Bro though. How's my Bro doing? Yeah, pretty darn good. Pull back to the ten. Probably make a new high within the next few days. All right, that's it for the defense. That's it for utilities. That's it for the. Um, finance, insurance. I got to go to the REITs, the real estate, another kind of a defensive. Uh, this is a realty income. They are a monthly dividend payer. So, you know, kind of a slower mover, but man, this thing's gone from what, 51 to 62. That's a nice move. Uh, you know, that's a 20% move in a short period of time for a, a monthly paying dividend stock. Uh, not bad. Uh, KKR, another one of these, uh, it's a real estate kind of a play, just trending with its moving average. It sold off like everything else. Now above its 10, that looks pretty darn good. SLG, I believe this is another monthly pair. SL Green Realty, yeah, this is this is looking strong as well. Um, what can you say? I mean, the, <laughs> this is very defensive though, and I'm just showing you the breadth of the market. Like, even though the indexes aren't doing a whole lot, there's a lot of strength underneath and stuff that you know you normally don't. I normally don't buy. Anyway, I'm going to go to something I'm a little more familiar with. That's the Shark Ninja. I have this one on my ready list this week, and the reason why is it's just forming this little shelf type pattern. I think eventually it's going to break out of it. It pulled back to its ten today, started a pop, and then pulled back. So I don't know. Maybe when the market cooperates, this one start making new highs. Above 92.50, that's, I like it above 92.50, but it's going to, it's going to go when it wants to go and not when we want it to go. So I'm just keeping my eyes on the shark ninja. O-N-O-N, they reported a couple weeks ago and this one blasted off today. 
I had it on my ready list and I did buy it. This, this is one of them that I did purchase. Uh, made a new high today. Now it's extended, right? 9.2% above the 10. So I had to probably pull back in the next couple of sessions, but that's a nice strong move for on holdings. Um, another one, but uh, there's just a lot of retail names that are doing well. Melly, I consider this retail. It's a Brazil retail internet um, company. And you can see this is like the shelf, like a uh, shark ninja, right? A move higher than this little shelf consolidation, pull back to the moving average and pop higher. Melly looks fantastic. SE is another one that has been doing great. You see the breakout now trading sideways. It's forming a shelf and allowing the moving averages to catch up to. Uh, let me see. Oh, Walmart. Walmart reported a strong quarter, you know, and this thing is just blasting higher. Uh, you know, you, you can't sniff at that at all. And this is a, a Dow Jones component. So it's driving that index higher as well. And then Costco. Costco is another one. It's kind of like a defensive name. You can see this this base here. I was going to put this on our ready list this week, but I already had a, enough stocks. I didn't want to overcrowd it, but uh, this one's doing well, making new highs up 16 bucks today and up 3.3% uh, for the week in the last two days. So you can see that base there and uh, Costco looks fantastic. Anyway, you can't kiss all the babies as they say. All right, I got to move on from retail to the hospital stocks. Just a couple that I'm watching, uh, THC, just doing nothing wrong, broke out, you know, and pulled back to its 50 for the first time since the breakout. Now it's just trending, you know, Kelly Slater style, surfing the moving averages, doing nothing wrong. Yeah, the last three days kind of sideways, allowing the moving averages to catch up. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, HCA Healthcare, and this one's just making new highs. This one is just looking parabolic, which is really strange for hospital stocks but okay you know you don't try to judge them right you just observe and this is what i'm observing is that you know hospital stocks are making new highs so just go with the flow bro this is a uh, ardent health partners ardt i've mentioned this one quite a few times that it, it was in this ipo base and now today you know blasted out six percent what a nice move i mean these are hospital stocks um really you know strong move here Daily closing range is 67%. Decent volume. Um, yeah, not bad uh, for uh, ARDT. And you can see that this recent IPO, you can see the, the blue dot indicating relative strength. So uh, up 7.5% this week. So not bad. All right. Those are the hospital names. I got to get to the drugs. Got a little disappointed with Eli Lilly today. They had uh, news where they're coming out with... Um, lower dose of their weight loss drugs, which brings in uh, a lower priced, lower dose of their weight loss drugs, which brings in different clientele, which to me should be a real boon. I thought this thing was going to make a new high today, and it came up a little bit short. I think it was 970. Here you can see it right there, just a tick below. 972.53 last week. So it was a nickel below it. Um, this is just a matter of time for Eli Lilly. You can see the uh, earnings line heading due north, the stock heading due north. Uh, you know, this thing's on course for $1,000, no doubt about it. Just a, a matter of time. Huge pipeline. But with that news, it really hurt the compounder. Uh, Hims down 7.5% because now uh, Lily's saying that their supply chain is not constrained and they have all the drugs they need. And so these compounders are going to be put out. I mean, him still has other products, but their weight loss uh, category is going to be hit real hard. And that also hurt uh, Viking, which has their um, weight loss compound. Yeah, down 6.2% on that news from Eli Lilly. But there was some other uh, drug stocks that are just strong, making new highs. Uh, this is Halozheim. Surfing the moving average, that looks fantastic. AstraZeneca, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, AstraZeneca, I had this on my ready list. I didn't buy it. Like I said, I never take my own advice. But this one's just going parabolic. Um, we take a look at the weekly chart here. Yeah, you can see that big base. And then uh, consolidation here, and boom. That one's moving higher. The other one that had a strong day and just been on fire is AbbVie. 
uh, from the medical and ethical uh, drugs group that looks strong. Uh, and the other one I wanted to show was HROW, which has been on a roll. A little pullback today. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. All right, enough of the drugs. I got to get to the um, the retail restaurant groups because, you know, McDonald's, obviously one of these um, Dow Jones components. Looks pretty good here. It made this big move off the low. Now it's kind of like flagging. We see this pattern often where it just makes a shelf, consolidates a little bit, then takes off. That looks pretty darn good to me. Still consolidating, you know, in this base on base pattern, though, but um, keep my eye on McDonald's and Starbucks, too. You know, they got the new CEO. You can see this is straight up from the bottom. Pullback last week. That looks like a short stroke almost. As it goes up 26% one week, gives up less than 1% on lighter volume the following week. And now this week, yesterday and today, it looks fantastic, Starbucks, so. The new CEO is paying dividends, even though he probably hasn't even done anything yet. Uh, look, this looks fantastic, like a flag, right? If you look at this pattern, just pull back, whoosh, whoosh, and then boom, see you later. A little pinch and pop. There you go. Starbucks, McDonald's, okay. The other one is Kava. I mentioned yesterday, like, I don't like to short strength. My buddy was texting me all night, like, hey, <laughs> it's, it's down you know, 10%, it's going to be down to 100 tomorrow. And I'm like, shut up, I'm sick, I'm in bed. My phone was kept buzzing, but uh, not bad today, down 6%. Um, it did have a, um, a low of 110 on this gap day, and it didn't breach that. So I think that's a positive if you're long. You know, I'm not long or short, I have no position. But if I'm long, I don't want to see it undercut that low of uh, 110. That's what I was watching for today with Kava. And it held that, you know, pretty easily. So this has got a lot of institutional support. If you look at, you know, these uh, these are uh, the uh, growth fund managers who've had success over the years. You know, Will Danoff at Fidelity, they got the Lord on their side. You can see it's got a lot of institutional support. Yeah, there's been some selling recently, and it went down today with insider sales. But it could have been a lot, lot worse. All right, let's go to Wingstop. Because it's football season. And uh, like I said, I like this above 400. It broke above the downtrend line on Friday. Now it's just kind of trading flat above 400. So to me, that looks pretty good for wing stuff. I think I have it on the ready list. If not, I might have taken it off. I should have had it on. But no, I don't see it on here. So anyway, that's the way it goes sometimes. Wing stop looks good. Uh, the other one, oh, Sweet Greens. Another one, this one's straight up from the bottom. And then what happens when you go straight up from the bottom? You know, 22 to 38. Now it's just kind of, it's it's flagging a little bit here. You're going sideways, and that's fine, allowing the moving averages to catch up. That one looks pretty good to me. All right, so that's it for the retail restaurant group. I got to get to software. The software is really, really hit and miss right now. I mean, you could really get hammered in this group, but uh, Zeta Global Holdings, this is one that um, I have on our ready list. I didn't buy it. I, no, no, I didn't buy it. I should have. <laughs> I actually I actually looked at my uh, account today and I thought I had a stock, but I didn't I didn't buy it like a dummy. So I'm, I know I'm off my game. Like, oh, I own that. And I looked at my account like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> you didn't buy it yet. You might have bought it in your dreams. But anyway, this is one that I like above the 2553 just um trending with its moving averages i mean that's a kelly slater stock you ever saw when it looks fantastic um oh app loving this is one that i have on the ready list this one is not ready i mean it's getting ready right straight up from the bottom so it's going sideways a little bit 9191 is your standard buy point it looks like it's bumped its head up against it a couple times but it's not ready to pop through. Maybe tomorrow, yeah, 9250, 9233. Maybe the next day, you know, so, sometime soon though, uh, it's going to pop above that old 9191 and stay above that level. App looks good to me. And that's why I have it on my ready list. Spotify, playing a possum, just going sideways, <laughs> right? Trade it down to its 21. It was up three bucks today. But this, this is the kind that'll wear you out. Um, especially if the market's really strong and like 
we just had a big recovery on the NASDAQ and this thing's just going sideways, drives you crazy, but still looks good to me. Near that 331.08 buy point, I would not give up on that one. And the last one is CLBT. This is Cellbrite. Uh, another one that I had on the ready list that I buy, no. And it just keeps making new highs. So sometimes I should take my own advice. New high today, about three and three quarter percent. All right, I just want to point out one thing here, and that's with SMCI. The Hindenburg folks had a short report out on it. And when you're, when you're putting a short report out, you just want to create fear and uncertainty and doubt in the investor's mind, because what they'll do is they'll just sell first and ask questions later. So this thing sold off real hard today, down to what, 513? You know, it closed up at 547, so that's 35 bucks off the lows. But enough of fear and doubt to get that initial selling going, right? And so the shorts can take advantage of that. But I just wanted to point out, I talk about shorting and this thing made this, you know, a vertical violation move, you know, from what, 963 down to 478 in a pretty short period of time. Then it took weeks for it just to rally back up. And for me to short, you want to be like a bully in the schoolyard. When the little wimp comes up to you, you push him down. And this is a little weak little wimp. SMCI has no strength. And the bully in the schoolyard just pushed him down on Monday, 8%. And now today, 2.6%. And that's how I prefer to short, although I didn't short SMC. I'm not looking to short in a market like this. <clears throat> but another thing I want to point out, somebody mentioned the eight-week hold rule, which um, I'm not going to explain it. Just this one qualified as it broke out from that three, 357 back here. And we want to take advantage of all this, right? But we don't want to write it all the way down like this. That's why we have rules. We have guardrails. If you followed the rules here and sold when it you know, broke the 50, you would have sold here at about, what, $917 and avoided this trip down to, what, 478 or what's now 547. So that's why we have rules. Celsius is another one. Had the eight-week hold rule. You can see that 44% there. So it went up 44% in a short period of time. in it uh Traded below the 50. So if you sold it at, um, what is it, 73, just got out. Yeah, it rallied back through and made that cup with handle, but then it traded below it again. So let's just say you sold it here when it sliced its 50, about uh, $77. You would have saved yourself all this pain and anguish down to $39. The moral of the story is with growth stocks, they're ticking time bombs. They're going to go off. You just don't want them to go off in your hand. There's very few rare exceptions that can grow and grow and grow forever and ever and ever. Um, like a Novo Nordisk. Uh, it's been, you know, a great stock forever and a day, right? I mean, Deckers is another one. Um, just <laughs> lower left to upper right. And, you know, the big mega caps. Apple has been, you know, quality stock for a long time. And I have to show you this, right? Amazon, another one. They're not even growth stocks anymore. They're not giving you enough growth. But my point is stocks, growth stocks especially, are going to crash and burn in, unless they're just really rare gems and there's not many of them. So you have to trade them. And SMCI and Celsius are two great examples. I just saw the Peloton CEO talk about how he's lost everything <laughs> and he hasn't lost everything. He only has 200 million though left. And you can see you want to take advantage of this, but but why? Why hold on to something like that? Holding and hoping, just get rid of it. Um, you know, when it sliced its 50 way back here, just say you, you were a you know a diehard Peloton fan. I mean, you, you would have sold it, you know, the 50 was what? <clears throat> this is a weekly chart. So the 10 is like 150. Wow. And then uh, you know, it's four bucks now. So don't hold and hope. These things are, uh, they can they can go up fast and they can go down fast. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow is going to be a really special day. Um, by the way, I have one more thing in honor of the great Steve Jobs. We have earnings in the morning from uh, Sentinel One. This is a computer software security stock and with CrowdStrike and Palo Alto and Okta and Fortinet. They're reporting in the morning. So... That'll be some, oh, wait a minute. They might have reported tonight, right? Yeah, they reported tonight. All right. Yeah, okay. They're not down much. I didn't look at the report. 
<laughs> I'll have more in the morning. These guys reported uh, Philip and Houston down 6%. Not good. Hmm. Box reported tonight. Now they're at 5%. It's computer software database. You can see this is making a nice symmetrical base here. So maybe to get above 30 tomorrow, that'd be great. Um, I will, like I said, I'll have more in the morning on these uh, these stocks reporting earnings. Whoa, Lamborella, fabulous stock up uh, 20%. Jeez, it's going, heck, we're not waiting for NVIDIA. We're going to town now. So I, I'll have more in the morning, but that must have been a really good report. Uh, JW Nordstrom definitely does not have the uh, cachet that it used to carry. It is up 8% after hours, so we have to hear what uh, they have to say. And then SMTC, which is another uh, semiconductor fabulous stock up 5%, so that's great. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, we have uh, Abercrombie & Fitch, which is going to impact the retail group a little bit. Uh, they're... Um, and I think they're going to have a good report. We just got to wait and see. Chewy, I see packages of Chewy everywhere in the neighborhood. People get stuff from Chewy for their for their pets. Coles reports in the morning. Ooh, that's a that's a not a pretty chart. Foot Locker is one that I'm really interested in. It's got this cup with handle, and this would have been on my ready list um, if it wasn't reporting earnings. I think the CEO knows what she's doing, and they're going to have a good report. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, BBWI reports hmm. in the morning. We'll see what they have to say. And then SJM, the jelly, Smucker's Jam and Jelly, pet food, coffee, um, yeah, beverages. Kind of a stage one cup with handle here. That looks pretty good. This is a pretty well-run company, so we'll see what they have to say. Anyway, um, that's it for me. I'm going to go take care of my voice. Uh, tomorrow's a new day. I think, um, you know, NVIDIA is going to be the story for the week. And so we're going to hear from them after the bell tomorrow. And that's going to, you know, decide which way the NASDAQ goes one way or the other for the rest of this week. And that, that chart actually looks pretty good. If, um, you know, if I'm just looking at a chart, not looking at earnings, I'm looking at this double bottom pattern, uh, made a low rally through the uh, 50 and now going sideways. I mean, if, if they didn't have earnings, I'd be buying that chart right there. But um, anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching at mcstockcharts.com. We never, ever give up.